doing what I was born to do and having more fun than a human being should be allowed to have at the same time. And we, uh, we're going to hit the phones again. It's open line Friday. Whatever you want to talk about, even if it doesn't make any sense, is perfectly fine. Here's Jeff in Minnesota. Great to have you with us. Dittos to you, Mr. Limbaugh. Uh, thank you, sir. I appreciate that. I will adhere to caller responsibility number one. Um, I'm a local city council member, and we were running into some space issues with our at our city hall. So what we end up doing is we end up taking and making satellite offices in each of our schools with a armed policeman that uses that space during the school day. Wait, 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 hold, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute. I'm not understanding something. You, you are a space. You, you have space issues at city hall. Yeah. You're a council Correct. member. So you're setting up satellite places in schools where people can go and watch the proceedings. No, we to take care of our space issue, we assigned policemen in each of our schools in a form of a satellite office. So essentially we put a armed policeman in every one of our schools for the school year. Okay, but it has nothing to do with city council proceedings. No, sir. No, I, I don't know to what be a city council member. Okay, all right, but I don't. What's the space problem? What, why, if you have a space problem, why do somebody with guns help alleviate space problem? I don't, I'm not putting two and two together here. The police department was part of our city hall, and we we're running out of space. So to make free. Oh, okay. So you're relocating police officers' official office space over to schools. Correct, sir. Okay. Okay. I'm sorry I'm so thick headed, but I finally figured it out. So you um, the point is you've got armed police in the schools now who are actually on correct. duty and as such in their offices which are at the schools. That is correct. Okay. And so how many people have been killed? Zero. Really? It's Zero just like work. We've had great success with it. Now, are these are, are are the officers that are in these satellite offices in the schools? They are side armed. Their weapons are visible. That is correct. Not concealed, and they're in uniform, so they're they're not plain clothes. They're so they're plainly visible, and it's obvious that they're police officers armed. Everybody in the school where those cops are can can tell that about them. That is correct. With how did you do? Th how did how did you out in front in the parking lot? How did you get this done without a bunch of people raising holy hell about it? It was kind of a win-win situation. It's it's, and you may be well aware. This is more of a common sense issue. Um, it it works. Well, you know, the president talked about that today in relationship to this entire subject of keeping children in schools safe. And he said it's nothing more than a common sense issue. And you know what? What you're describing as common sense makes sense to me. Here's the amazing thing. And this, I think, is a useful way in illustrating what I'm claiming to be a loss of sense, rising stupidity. Common sense isn't common anymore. There's just like our common morality seems to have evaporated. So does the notion of common sense. And it's been replaced by whatever people's political preferences or political agenda happen to be. And that, I think, is what really befuddles so many people. Common sense is just refuted. It's unaccepted. In fact, it's oftentimes said to be another problem. You know, our last caller, Tom from Minnesota, I, I, I misunderstood what he was saying. I got confused. He said, we work for the town council. We had a space problem. So we put cops in satellite. And I thought, what do cops and the town council have? And that's what he was not talking about. He was talking. He's on the town council. Therefore, he has credibility. What he's going to say next. And a space problem is in, in the police department. And so they set up satellite 
offices in schools for the police officers where there was no room at the main station. Now stop and think of that as an idea. Instead of teachers and security people with concealed carry, which, look, I see the problem with that. I mean, there's there's no perfect solution here. But I'll tell you, we know enough now to know that all this rage and anger at the NRA is totally worthless. It's misdirected. It is a waste of time. And the NRA has no culpability in what happened at that high school. It's stupid. And a waste of time to get mad at them. Stupid and a waste of time to get mad at Trump. So when that happens, you can readily identify a political agenda in action and not a serious discussion of solutions. Imagine establishing a tiny police office in every school, just like you've got the school nurse, you have the school doctor, you have the school STD director, you've got the school police. Except that they are actual police from the community, but their desks are in the school and not at the police department. How many of you where you live, you know, you go to the mall and there's a little kiosk where it's a satellite police department. This may be actually something to build on. You're talking about uniform police, readily identifiable. They're carrying their sidearms, nothing concealed. By definition, they are trained and ready, except this guy in the sheriff's department that was outside the school and didn't go in. But right there, you've got a deterrent. What? The guy didn't go in. You know what? He thinks he did a good job. His name is his name is uh, Peterson, right? Yeah, Scott Scott uh, Scott Peterson, deputy who didn't stop Florida shooting, thinks he did a good job. Believed he did a good job because he called in the location of the massacre and gave a description of the shooter. This is his union rep speaking. School resource officer Scott Peterson, who resigned in disgrace from the Broward County Sheriff's Office, was distraught after the shooting, but he thought that he did his duty, according to the president of the Broward Sheriff's Office Deputies Association. This guy's name is Jim Bell. He says, yeah, I think he he believed he did a good job. He called in a location, set up the perimeter, called in the description of Cruz. Well, we played the soundbite where the... Sheriff Scott Israel just destroyed the guy, you know, in some sniveling little medium. Well, what should he have done, Sheriff? What should he? He should have gone in. He should have engaged the killer and killed the killer. Exactly right. You go in, you get in, get it, and get out. The guy didn't go in. Union rep says he did a good job, did his job, called in the Disturbance, gave him exact location, set up the perimeter. So what, the shooter couldn't escape? But look, back to the point. So here you have armed police that are on duty doing their normal daily job. Uh, They just do it from a desk or an office in the school rather than from the police department. And the shifts rotate, so you have a different... Uh, crew could be sheriff's deputies. I don't know, police, sheriff, deputy, wh- whichever w- would have jurisdiction here. Now, that sounds like a very common sense proposal. At bare minimum, it is a common sense proposal. I dare say solution because I would get pushback in arguments. But in terms of proposing things, that's something that's common sense. You have no concealed carry, you have no deceit. You don't have to worry about whether the concealed carry people know what they're doing, whether they've been properly trained, whether they've been following up on the training, being recertified or all that, because we already know that with uniformed police and sheriff's deputies. Plus, everybody would know they are there. And there is the deterrent factor right there. Everybody would know where they are. 
Now, on a big school like this one, this school's as big as mine. My the, the student body, I think, was thirty two hundred where I went to school. But it was just it was there were two schools for one town. This is a this was three thousand students roughly. That's that's a large school. So you 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 if if you have a static location for the police, then people are going to know where they are. And thinking ahead, if you're a perp, you could probably plan a shooting as far away from where the uniformed police are as possible. But still, the, the knowledge that they're there, the knowledge that somebody who is legally trained, legally empowered to shoot back at you. Because right now, these perps, as wacko and, and disturbed as they might be, they know full well that they're going to be the only ones with a gun. Because they know full well the American left has turned schools into gun-free zones. So it, it is, for the first two to five minutes, they have no opposition. They have no obstacles. So that's something to think about. I'm, I'm, I didn't understand what the caller was getting at at first. I thought he was talking about shortage of space at Town Hall which is where uh, city councils. This is Randy in Atascadero, California. Hi, great to have you with us. Yeah, hi, Rush. Uh, good to be with you. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm a trauma surgeon. I've been a trauma surgeon for 40 years, seen a lot of uh, trauma, particularly gunshot wounds. Uh, and when I was uh, hearing them talk the other day about having guns at the schools, you know, my initial reaction is that, you know, negative towards that. Uh, just because of what I do and what I see, but I, as as I have gone through my career, I've come to realize that, you know, there's idealism, which would mean, you know, that guns won't be shooting anybody, but the realism is, is that it does, they do, as long as they're there and and they exist, the genie's out of the bottle, and so you have to protect yourself. And I, I think the idea of of having someone at a school who is very well trained in in handling guns and knowing how to how to uh, deal with those situations I think is is absolutely necessary. Uh, the only one thing I I get a little worried about is when I hear them c keep talking about the teachers. Not that the teachers can't do that, but if they keep talking about teachers, the, you know, the teachers are kind of becoming sitting ducks. If you're a gunman, you're going to go in there. First one you're going to do a shoot is going to be a, the teacher. <laughs> so I I I you know I I like them. To, I can see that. Keep we have on. come up with we've come up with an alternative idea today. We had a caller from Minnesota, who's a member of town council. He didn't identify the city, but he's a member of town council. He said they had in their police department had a space problem. They didn't have room for all the officers for desk duty just to hang around. I mean, they're not always out in the patrol car. There's officers hanging around. They didn't have enough space. So what they did was open satellite police stations one or two cops in a room at neighborhood schools and they actually were uniformed and they were carrying their weapons which are sidearms so it was obvious they were they were weaponized and that they were police uh but they were they were there as police officers in a segregated part of the school that was thought of as the police station they were not doing concealed carry they were not teachers and i thought you know that's that kind of makes sense to me. How many times you go to the mall and you see a miniature kiosk with with police officers in there? Any number of places where this happens, and you have if you would therefore have a known deterrent in the school, you would have trained police officers who 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 are fully equipped and and trained to deal with firearms and situations like happened in the school. You wouldn't be putting the onus on teachers who would have to be trained for it. Uh, it's an idea, at least, and it may be worth trying. You know, it, it's going to be automatically rejected by people who want to keep blaming guns. But no, it, ap it, it appealed to me much more than having teachers be the people carrying the burden of this. I, I, I agree with you. I think that you really do need to have professionals, uh, you know, because they're, you know, they're trained in it, and, and when, when it really comes to a, an emergent situation, they're the ones that least have had experience with that, right. and and uh, 
So I mean, I think that I think that's a really good idea. Or retired uh, police officers, uh, and and uh, uh, and and also, you know, I think it's just key to reduce the access points to these schools. Well, I mean, I'd say I on the on the teacher business, you know, I've I've made no secret of the fact that I am for personnel in schools that are carrying guns, concealed carry, whatever. I have never been a a a loud voice for those people being teachers. I think some could be if they can pass tests and so forth, but the idea that teachers should carry the burden, I'm not crazy unless you give them some additional pay. But you there's no reason you can't have professionally trained armed security in there that don't look like security. They're plain clothes and they're just suits. They're walking around. Nobody knows who they really are. You pass them off as, as, as members of the administrative staff or what have you, but they're there. And and perps would know they're there, wouldn't know who they are, wouldn't know where they are, but would know they're there. There's some deterrence in that. Look, before you go, I have to run something by you. I saw, you know, I read a lot of tech blogs and the tech yeah. blogs, all they all hate the NRA. They all, I mean, they're just, they're perfectly, they're just perfect leftists. And one yeah. of them went out and found a trauma surgeon who said, the reason we've got to stop the AR-15 is a pistol fired through a liver or kidney. We can save the organ, but an AR-15 obliterates the organ and the person has no chance. And it was all a way to, to create additional thinking that we need to ban the quote unquote AR-15, which is the devil of the moment. And they went, I got a trauma surgeon to describe what happens to an internal organ with an AR-15 round as opposed to a pistol bullet. Well, and well, of course that's going to be the case. One's a rifle and one's a pistol. Right. I mean, it has to do with velocity, as you probably know. And right. um, the fact is, is that that's true about the rifles, but, you know, it's also true about a Magnum. You know, yeah. you have a forty-four Magnum pistol, and it will do the same thing. I have dealt with, with those, and they make a, a, a hole bigger than your fist in the liver. And right, they that's, tumble, that's and the almost, exit hole is bigger than the entry. Yeah, I know it's none of it. Yeah, pretty. so I mean, I, I, it's 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 not just the rifles. I mean, I personally have to say that I think there has to be strict limitations on these automatic rifles. Uh, but I, I I I do think that you're not living in this world if you think that getting rid of all guns or getting rid of guns, you know, for the general public is going to get rid of the problem because precisely. It's so true. You know, the criminals then are going to be the main ones with the guns. Well, by and, definition, it's criminal. Yeah. You're all, when you start regulating the law abiding, what are you accomplishing? Except denying them liberties, freedom, whatever. Regulating the law abiding is absurd here. It's common sense, but it doesn't, it doesn't present that way to people who've been radicalized on this. Look, I appreciate the call, Randy. I got to go. I'm way out of time here. We'll be right back, folks. Don't go away. Looky here, folks. Houston Chronicle. Headline, North Texas school is getting a police station because horrific things can happen anywhere. They're calling it a police substation. North Texas public charter school is getting a police substation on campus, not because of any specific shooting event, but because horrific things can happen anywhere. The school board of West Lake Academy worked with the city council of Keller, which is north of Fort Worth, to get the plan for a Keller police substation on the school's campus. The story was uncovered by CBS DFW, Dallas Fort Worth, the CBS Dallas Fort Worth Bureau. So it's already happening out there, Minnesota. And now in uh, in the Dallas Fort Worth area, this thing may, this this idea may pick up steam. To the chagrin of the Democrats, the anti gun that they're going to hate this law enforcement. The charges, of, well, you know what Black Miter, Black Lives Matter says they're going to target Black Americans. You wait till the left gets hold of this idea, and they're going to overshoot, and it's going to backfire on them, just like they have on taxes.